<laughs> and and at, what, at what level did you compete? Uh, we competed at international level. And, and you're still friends with her now? Um, yeah, we, we, we know each other, yeah. When did you last see her? Oh, um, a few months ago. Where? Um, just around the corner. Where? Just... What, in the street? Where? Just in... Just in uh, Where? In London. Where? <laughs> at, a, at a gym. Where, sorry, I got this. Where we, in we... London? <laughs> Where in London did you see her? I saw her in a, in a restaurant in West London. Which restaurant? <laughs> She's uh, lying. Next. Uh, <laughs> Are you the same age then? Uh, Viva's actually about a year older than me. Yeah. <laughs> And, and uh, if you're friends with her, you would know uh, when she's due, because... Is she pregnant? Because I didn't like to say. <laughs> I thought you just let yourself go. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, what, so you, were, you can't swim, Lee? Well, I couldn't swim when I was 30. I mean, how old are you now? I'm 39. 39. Well, I think you can say if she's been trying to teach you to swim for nine years. No, and you she still hasn't can't. been trying to teach me to swim for nine years. She tried to teach me to swim when I was 30 and she failed. Where did you have your lessons? Uh, in my hometown, Southport. I reckon he's lived, he's lived in London for more than nine years. He wouldn't have been in Southport nine years ago. So he How do you no longer have lived in London? Because, of course, you've been on the circuit, you've been around for a long Believe time. Believe it or not, you can live up north and still be on the no, telly. No, you can't. No, you can't. <laughs> We've, we've got this thing that's just come up north called the car, and it's brilliant! <laughs> Why, at age 30, yeah. what was it that made you think, I really ought to learn to swim? It's a good question, and I can answer that very simply. I, I moved to Brighton, and uh, I lived over in a flat that overlooked the sea. So, hang on, so you moved to Brighton and you travelled to Southport to have your swimming lessons? Thank what? you, sir! You're done! <laughs> You should be on the bill. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you're finished, can I yeah. continue the story? Yeah. Yes. I don't think there's any point. At the age of 30, I moved to Brighton and I looked at the sea and I thought, oh my God, I'm terrified of the water. I'm moving back to Southport. <laughs> <laughs> why don't you join? Why don't you join Gabby in Liar's Corner? <laughs> <laughs> Rob, when did you go out with... with... Uh, this was uh, the... What, in 1991, in between my school and university. What kind of torch was it? You... Quite a cheap one. We, uh, we met at Gateway Supermarket, which was my after-school job. Uh, she was putting out a display of cheap uh, plastic torches. And, you thought, and That's I, thought, the I gift. thought it would be a funny joke uh, to give her that for Christmas, and it didn't go down as well as I'd hoped. And who dumped who? Viva dumped me. It was partly through the, the torch. Also, it might have been something to do with the fact that I didn't go up to her uh, 18th birthday party because I hated all of her friends. Why did you hate all her friends? They were uh, boorish and irritating. <laughs> <laughs> but what did you learn from the relationship? What did you take um, away? To try and, uh, try and form relationships with people that are based on more than just sex and drinking. It's, it's... <laughs> You say you learned that message in 1991. Well, I, I tried to. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK. <laughs> it's definitely Robert because of the way that Viva is reacting when Robert is speaking. She's kind of going, oh, that idiot. <laughs> so I think Robert is telling the truth. Uh, can I also say that for a pregnant woman, those boots are ill-advised. You say so? <laughs> <laughs> hey, can you back support my love? You're ah, making problems for She was for a later gymnast, on. you see, so she's got very good core strength. Gabby, she's, oh, she's a swimming not teacher. <laughs> <laughs> she 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 be... She's not pregnant, it's a buoyancy aid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, David Steen, we need an answer. So is this person an no. erstwhile girlfriend from Robert's past? Uh, Gabby's gymnastic opponent or Lee's swimming teacher? I think R Robert is telling the truth because when he said that her friends were really boorish, he looked really quite nervous. Yes, about it he did. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. I think we're going to say okay. Rob's telling the saying truth. It's Robert. Viva, perhaps you'd like to reveal who you really are. I was Gabby's oh! rival. Oh! In the <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to Viva and thank you very much indeed.
And so we come now happily to our final round. More disturbing insights from our panellists who yet again have no idea what's written on the card they're about to read. Uh, beginning with... <coughs> David. <laughs> I believe disaster will occur if I don't adhere to my special alarm clock system. <laughs> what is this alarm clock system? <laughs> Well, the system is uh, that I have uh, two alarm clocks, one that plugs in and one on my phone, and I set them both at the same time, because historically I used to be quite a deep sleeper and it was difficult to wake up. One will usually go off first, even though they're for the same mm. time, because the clocks are independent, and I have to turn the other one off before it goes. What uh, kind of disasters do you imagine will occur? Uh, well, I, I, I imagine I might die, basically. <laughs> I imagine from... I might discover I've got a terminal disease or I imagine whatever thing I'm most worried about. Are you following this? I'm totally confused. You've got two alarm clocks, yeah, one, one of them is plugged in, one of them's on your phone, mm -hmm. and the explanation for why do you do this is because I think I might get a terminal illness. Yeah, is there a big bit that yeah. I've missed out? Yes, there is. Uh, the, all the words I said in between those parts of the story. <laughs> that's, that's what you've missed out. Right. Yeah. So, Lee, do you think there's any truth in this? I think we have to rely on Robert's knowledge of David for this. I think it's true. Yeah, you do? True. Yes. I've spent many years watching David try to leave the house without unlocking and locking and unlocking and locking the door seven or eight times, and so um, I believe he would have a system for waking up. <laughs> you are team captain. Definitely true, definitely true. OK, we'll go with true. You're saying it's true. OK, David, reveal all. It is, in fact, true. <laughs> Yes, so David does believe that uh, if he doesn't adhere to his special alarm clock system, some kind of disaster will occur, like someone finding out he's got a special alarm clock system. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of sportsmen are superstitious too. Tim Henman, for example, had a lucky towel that he believed made him win tennis matches. He left it in a hotel room in 1993. <laughs> uh, next, <coughs> Krishnan. I check for monsters before I go to bed <laughs> because I'm afraid of the dark. How can that possibly be true? You read the news. Yeah, but there's lights on when he reads the news. <laughs> <laughs> Has this gone on a long, long time? Well, since I was very young. Does this happen every night? Every night before you go to bed, you check for monsters? It, dep it depends on whether I'm alone. Well, it's probably slightly embarrassing if you're not alone to check for monsters. Possibly. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a journalist. I do, I, you know, I travel. I'm, I'm on my own quite a lot. So, talk us roughly through. You're in a hotel somewhere, away from your wife. It's dark. That much we can pick I'm up. I'm in a hotel room. I, I'm on my own, yeah. um, as, I, as I generally would be in a hotel room. And um, <laughs> I would check uh, in the wardrobe, um, in, the, in the ensuite bathroom. Right. Because you never know what's in the shower. Yeah, I think you'd be pretty sure it's a pubic hair on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> the hotels I stay at, anyway, it's a, it's a certainty. Um, Lee, what are you veering towards? Are we saying not true? I, I really don't think Unanimous? it's true. Unanimous? Lie. Yeah. Unanimous, it's a lie. OK, they're saying it's a lie, Krishnan. Tell us the truth. It's 100% true. <laughs> it is absolutely true. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Rob. Ah. You're on. Um, I was voted the 47th sexiest man in Wales. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the 48th? I think it was John Humphreys, the uh, <laughs> guy who reads. Who, who made this part? Who was it? Uh... Wales has its own newspaper called The Western Mail. Have we asked him which year this was? Oh, yeah, which year was it? <laughs> it was clearly not in the last ten. It was about... <laughs> <laughs> Listen to you, George Clooney. Um, <laughs> I could take that coming from Robert, who has a certain earthy charm. Right, thank but you. But from a rejected chuckle brother, it's a bit rich. <laughs> so, are you team captain, what are you saying? OK, we think that's a lie. Yeah. OK, they're saying it's a lie. Is it the truth or a lie? It's true. It's absolutely true. <laughs> Yep, it's true. Rob was voted the 47th sexiest man in Wales and would have finished even higher if he hadn't got cramp in his dialing finger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next, <coughs> Robert. I was voted the 88th sexiest man in the world. <laughs> <laughs> By who? <laughs> 
But it was the readers of some women's magazine. Which Blind one? and Wretched. You would know. <laughs> <laughs> this new, new look or new, new woman. Where did David finish? I'm not so very not, sure David not, was not, on not that listed, list. unfortunately. <laughs> Generally, Robert is considered the, 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 the better looking one of your uh, outfit. But if it were me, I, can I say this, not in a gay way, but I <laughs> think that you are easier on the eye than him. <laughs> I think there's something very pleasing, and I, you may notice I've been looking at you a lot. <laughs> not, not in a gay way, yeah. but in a, in a... I just think he looks lovely. I feel a bit weird about this. <laughs> but, you know, thanks. Well, anyway, if we could drag you back yeah. to um, uh, um, the poll. I think, it's, I, I, think, I think it's true. Robert, the answer? It is true. Yay! It is true. Uh, which uh, hyperactive buzzing sound means that at the end of tonight's contest, it's uh, David's team who've lied their way to victory, having thrashed these teams 7-6. Oh,